The next lesson comes from uh, Chapter 7 of Photoshop uh, Classroom in a Book CS5. Um, it's a really great one. I think you're going to like doing this one. Um, in your Lesson Files folder, we're going to pull out um, 06 Start, drop that into Photoshop, and we're left with um, this guy here. Let me minimize that. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to cut him out of this background, and there's already a background back behind him. We're going to drop him into uh, this background here. So as I talked about in the last lesson, anytime you can do a good selection and make a good mask, you're able to cut people out and put them into interesting things, which opens up a whole world of creativity in Photoshop. So we're going to start with a pretty good, decent selection here using the uh, Quick Select tool, great tool in CS5, where I just click someplace on here and start running it around uh, until everything is selected. Okay. Um, now his hair, we're going to not worry about selecting the whole thing because we're going to fix that up. So once I have a good selection made of this guy, I can go into refine edges. And I do this for a number of different reasons. I do this um, so I can clean up the regular uh, selection. Most things are a regular selection. If I were to cut a basketball out, it's a regular hard edge selection. Skin, be it soft or not, skin would be normally a regular selection. A shirt, regular selection. A pair of shoes, a regular selection. Then there's things that are difficult. Things like smoke, fire, hair, and water. Um, things that are kind of soft edged and sort of translucent. Those need to also be fixed. This refine edges box allows me to fix both things. So we're going to bump through these different boxes here and learn how to use it. So first is view mode. And right now I'm on the view mode of on layers, which allows me to see the layers that are down below. It's helpful, but we've got a guy on a light colored background. So the color that's going to bleed through a lot is, is light colored. And so if we put him on black, you'll see that uh, it's a lot easier to see where we have problems. Okay. Now I'm going to zoom in on him. Uh, using the just the magnifying glass tool, the zoom tool that's right here in the refine edges box. Zoom in on his face. Zoom in even closer. So our selection is not bad. It's pretty good. Um, and I'm zoomed in here at almost 200 percent. And it's at 200 percent that I start to see that it's not really the smoothest thing in the world. Most selections, as soon as you make them, aren't the smoothest thing ever. So we can do the refine edges box to smooth out some of it. Um, so I'm going to click on Smart Radius, and then I'm going to take my radius, and I'm just going to slide it up a little bit. And I've just nudged it 7 tenths of one pixel here, 0.7 pixels, and you can see it's already smoothed it out. Okay, so there's my before, and nudge it up, and there's my after. I don't want to go too far because it starts to um, make part of his face disappear. You see where it's turned gray on his nose and on his mouth. His face is actually starting to disappear. But if I just nudge it just a little bit, and I have a little halo around the selection that starts to disappear and I'm doing okay at this point. So it's a nice smooth selection. Um, did a pretty good job here. If I click up here where it says show radius, it shows me just a little sliver of this and what this is is the selection and then it's 3.1 pixels on either side of the selection where Photoshop is looking for an edge. So Photoshop is is able to tell that uh, there's an edge between the nose and this white space as long as I tell Photoshop to look in that area. So the edge detection box here tells Photoshop where to look. Let me turn off that show radius bit. So let me get the grabber hand and I'll just go on a quick tour. Little little fading there on the button there. We'll fix that in a little while. Go on a quick tour around my selection here. It's looking pretty good. Couple little mistakes maybe right here. We can fix that in a minute. And then, of course, the hair is the big problem for us. So the edge detection, and then you can also use some of these adjust edge sliders. I don't really use them too much. Um, I haven't found them too useful most of the time. Um, I suppose if you have something pretty fuzzy in there, you'll be able to use those. Um, but I found most of the time the edge detection box is enough. But next to the edge detection box is a refined radius brush. And the way that works is that I can paint on, remember we looked at the radius here, I can paint on my own radius to tell Photoshop to go find um, some edges in there. So I'm going to take this paintbrush, I'm going to make it a little bit bigger, there's a little slider up here at the top, 
and I'm gonna start painting around the edge of the hair okay and I'm not gonna go too much into the inside of his head where the hair is solid I'm just painting around uh, where his head is a little bit softer and when I let go Photoshop finds edges within where I painted and it does a pretty good job then of of masking out that hair let me finish it off tell Photoshop to try and find edges in this area Okay, and Photoshop does it finds some edges in here so it's on black right now so a real good test right now is if I were to switch this view mode to on layers and see how it looks up against that orange background that looks pretty good maybe a little missed spot here so let me hit that with my brush going around the edge again we're gonna fix this little area where it's orange is bleeding through we'll fix that later but uh, the amazing part though is that this brush has helped me select what used to be a really hard uh, thing to select and that's something soft like hair also works on smoke fire water things like that that are kind of translucent okay so then the last box we want to deal with then is the um, output box which tells what do tells Photoshop what do I want to do when I'm done with this refine edges box and I want to output it to a layer mask so I pull that down and click OK and it spits out a layer mask here in the layers panel okay so it's it's pretty good it's not exactly perfect yet I'm gonna do some small cleanups and I'm gonna do it directly on the mask using a paintbrush tool I'm gonna make sure it's a nice hard edge brush Okay, and I can control my size either with this slider here or using my bracket keys on my keyboard. And if I want something to show, see how I kind of miss part of the lens here? I can just paint a little bit of white paint on there. Now if I go too far, nothing to worry about. I can undo it either just by undoing through the history panel or I can use some black paint to clean that up. Okay and I'll just kind of take a little tour again around him to make sure I've got a good clean selection remember I mentioned this a couple of times I've got orange bleeding through here zoom in so you can see that a little bit better so uh, in this case I'll use some white paint switch that back over to white paint I'm gonna paint over some white pixels just to get his shirt back through so there's no orange bleeding through on his shirt okay I'm gonna just go on my tour again okay need some white pixels here show the shirt again because it's bleeding the orange is bleeding through round to the other side oh I went a little too far I'm using a mouse not my drawing pen right now okay back to white and I can just solidify these kind of translucent partially visible pixels here Okay, around the collar here I got a little bit of a halo so I'm gonna to switch to black and clean that halo off okay and probably pretty good shape let me hit control zero and take a look at him uh, looks pretty good so um, I've used I've made a selection and used refined edges then to clean up the normal stuff which is the stuff around his skin his glasses his shirt and the difficult stuff the things like his hair here um, and if I can make a good clean selection, put a mask on it, I could drop this guy now into any environment, uh, any other photograph that I happen to have. And that's pretty powerful as you start to get creative.